The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. Apologize for being late today. Um, had some things to take care of this morning, actually involving trading, so I'll tell you about those in, in a bit. Um, taking a look at the S&Ps. And everybody's been sick around here, so I'm going to blame it on sickness, too. S&Ps, uh, let's get right into it. You know, uh, I think somebody said in the den, this has been the one of the longest, somebody said last week, but I didn't really realize this, one of the longest stretches without a 1% pullback, maybe in history. Um, so we're contending, you know, this is, I sound like a broken record, but uh, I, I think the only way to play this is try to buy volatility. It's kind of interesting that um, we haven't actually moved one way or the other already, but uh, we've got the inauguration. The S&Ps are down three points this morning. The Dow futures are down 10 points and uh, nobody knows what to do. Nobody knows whether to buy this or just to get out. So uh, at some point, we will probably have some kind of fundamental thing that comes out that uh, it might come out of a Trump Twitter message. It might come out of uh, a policy change for the good or the bad uh, as far as the market's concerned. Uh, so, you know, again, it's, it's a complete crapshoot, in my opinion. You don't need to be taking any large positions with a biased opinion one way or the other. Um, again, I completely was shocked when uh, somebody threw that out in the den last week. I just didn't, I didn't realize that. Um, but that doesn't mean it has to sell off. A lot of times, a lot of these instruments will kind of go the wrong way before they go the right way. Um, and that could be the case with the S and P's and you could get a, you know, just a moonshot up and everybody's scared. They're going to miss the train and a lot of, you know, investors out there in the world. And, and, you know, there's, uh, you know, millions and millions of people that could jump on the train late drive this thing a little bit higher and uh then you have to kind of keep your eye on it are we going to do you know a key reversal off of it or are we going to kind of base and even go higher so a lot of things can happen um don't know exactly what's going to happen so we're just going to have to do the volatility play let's take a look at uh, oil uh this is something else that and let me take a look at oil here And man, I paid a massive e-signal bill last week. Um, I hope you guys never have to face something that large. You got to love them. Let me get the uh, right month here, guys. Sorry. Yep. Okay. So we're looking at uh, March crude here. All right, so here's the weekly view. We never had that, you know, we talked about last week, you know, really uh, that weekly close in the profile. It hasn't happened yet, and uh, I've been relatively bullish on crude. Hadn't been wanting to short this, trying to find reasons to buy it. Gotten clipped the past two weeks trying to dance around on this 52, now it's 52.32 top of the profile on the, on the March contract. But I see this as uh, as something to buy. Uh, I see it as you've got 52.24 here, 52.32. Um, you've got all this in the scanner. And when you look at this product, um, you know, it's kind of still, in my opinion, okay to be long, not okay to be short. And you're kind of coming down into that maximum pullback on the dailies again, which is the weekly unfair high. So I'm just looking at that as it is what it is. Let's take a look at the 10-year just to kind of surf around, get some of the usual suspects out of the way. Um, you know, the 10 year we talked about this, you know, wasn't really going to be something, 
you know, to really take any large bets on at this stage. We talked about doing a contra trade against the long-term trend down on the long side around that 123.10, 123.20 20 area. Here's where we're at now on the 10-year. Um, I was trying to pick a battle around 124, 14.15. That didn't work out. So now you've got a profile that's actually edged higher for the first time on the daily. So you now have a new chance to play defense here, 124.06. I know that's higher than where we were earlier, or uh, excuse me, um, Friday. But you've got to take a look at this now as a pretty decent sign to possibly start nibbling again on a sh just a really short-term trade up into 125.09. That's the trade on the 10-year right now. Uh, let's take a look at gold. Seeing things this morning. Okay, so uh, let's hit the dollar first. I mean, the dollars, before we talk about any of these major commodities, dollars obviously obviously been coming off. Um, I told you I was a little disturbed. I'm missing a little bit of a bounce last week. Now we've, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> We might have a chance now to hit that weekly on Fair High 99.63. Um, that's going to be the back the truck up sign. And you've also got another uh, bottom of a profile here on our former daily fair auction, which coincides to that same area, 99.63, 99.95. So you've got a really good dig in area down there, good support. And uh, gold, going back to this and a couple other commodities. Gold, um, you know, to me, I, I, you know, you still, and we had a close last week within the profile. We've obviously moved up a little bit here, kind of by default on the uh, dollar coming off. Reached a high of 1219. So I'm still thinking it's okay to, to trade this from the short side below this 1211 area. I really want to see the dollar come down a little bit more, and I want to see gold kind of sit here, not wanting to spike up again. And then that's going to really allow for me to get some conviction about being short gold. But um, <clears throat> you've got to kind of wait and see on that one. I, I think you just got to watch the dollar on that particular trade and quite a few other commodity trades on a relativity basis. VIX um, still hanging around 12. We talked about that. Uh, somebody was asking, how do you trade the VIX? They looked up and there's no way to trade the dollar sign VIX. That's true. So the ETF VXX um, and options on the VXX are not a bad way to go, and also the uh, VIX futures, and they have options on both of those. So let's keep moving. Uh, silver. Uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more partial to looking at gold as the trade instead of silver. Um, I like gold because that 1211 big number is sitting there. So uh, I'm kind of passing on silver right now. Let's take a look at natural gas, if we dare. Um, so I think a couple of weeks ago we were looking around this 3.194 area as a chance for it to bounce. I mean, what a what a crazy product! And um, now we're starting to trade below 3.194. I, I, you know, some guys were asking about that. So I got an email about it. Um, I just, you know, I, I, I don't have a lot of opinions on this. Technically, it just seems to not really follow a lot of rules. Um, and I don't like the fact that we kind of bounced off these unfair lows with a little bit of noise there and just reversed back into it. So, you know, we could head lower on natural gas. I'd watch out for that. Let's look at China. Somebody says it. Um, you know, I, I love this trade actually from the long side, and I I love that. If you look at this, let me see here, how we reverse back back into the profile twice now. So um, I'm looking at this product. I'm looking for this product to get back up in the 35.21 easily. We're gonna be right back, folks. The CSI 300 is what we're looking at. Sorry, I didn't tell you the product name.
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. And, uh, on the note of the s and is just being, I know Tom's just so happy. He's had so much to talk about with the s and is just sitting there forever. <laughs> yes. um, just, you know, I mean, it's tough to really, I mean, look at this any other way than what we've been talking about. Um, and here, and I look at the breath calculations, and again, I've, we've kind of been going over this, but it's getting kind of worse as far as, non-directionality goes um on the daily you know aggregate profile breadth and here's the uh the chart of the of the index itself the s&p's down below continuous contract um you got 261 stocks sitting in the middle of their uh, daily balance here now that that's actually quite unbelievable because that is about as non-directional as you get over half the stocks in the s&p are sitting in a daily middle of balanced area right now 141 are trading below 102 are trading excuse me trading above 102 are trading below so as you can see this middle ground continues to get higher here that's the blue line so let me show you this um so when we get into this area if you look at how many stocks are trading within the profiles on the daily, you eventually get some kind of break when you get into this area, especially when you creep up into it like this. So, and you get a break one way or the other. So, uh, putting it all together, if you have this product, um, 
you can do a lot of different introspective looks at what's going on in different time frames when it comes to these breadth charts. You can also get the the major inflection points um, associated with that time frame too. So there's that 2237 below 2277 uh, sitting there, and the S and P's right now. Let me go back to uh, you. Signal really quick here, 2261. So. You know, not only are there hordes of stocks in their own balanced areas, 261 to be exact, and that probably will climb higher when the market opens today. You got the S and P's sitting in the middle of their balanced area, so who knows what this thing's going to do? Um, I'm sure some of the hosts on TFNN have their own opinions of whether to get short or get long right now. But it, you know, I think if you're going to play that bias game. It might not be a bad idea to look at a hedge around it. So, for instance, if you feel compelled to trade the S and P's, um, you know, doing something simple like being short the S and P's and buying in the money calls as the hedge, because you're gonna, you're not gonna have to pay a lot for premiums right now for that hedge because the market is so bleh. So, um, and that would be the same case for for getting long. I mean getting long the S&Ps and buying some in-the-money puts uh, in case the market comes apart and you're wrong. I, I, you know, I, there's a lot of safe ways to play this right now. And uh, trying to squeeze juice out of this on a day trading basis right now is, um, you know, for guys who, are, who love range-bound trading, I mean, this is where it's at. But if you use indicators, there's an there's a indicator on Bloomberg called Trender. And that trender indicator, I've looked at it lately, it has gotten people chopped into oblivion um, as this market has just continued to go sideways because trender changes trend every single day, it seems like, that particular technical indicator. So um, it might be time to look at a long-term, you know, back the truck up on volatility play, or if you're, or if you're looking at a a, a biased direction on this one way or the other. Just put the hedge on and don't look at it. Just when it happens, it happens. Have I said that enough already? I think so. All right. Let's take a look at a couple of uh, bellwethers here. Okay. Um, Apple, we have... Uh, Really, I've personally stayed away from this on a long side. We've been talking about that. Um, but you got something interesting happening here. On the, on the daily, you know, we did poke our head above, but I really think we've already – okay, so let's, get, let's go back to this phase right here. So new profile attempt to appear. We never completed the whole fair auction down below. When we got near it, we just moved up significantly. So um, if you're looking to get a little daring here, you do have 119.93 to lean against wherever Apple opens. I think, uh, is it open now? Yeah, 119.78. Since we've already kind of spiked above and tested this 114.82, it's a little concerning to try to go short this because there's really no other cycle that hasn't already been completed almost for this to, to kind of do its thing again. But if you're looking to short this, you do have something to lean against here. And that's the good news to play defense, 119.93. And we could go down and revisit 117.86, but um, right now the market's so daggone non-directional. Um, that's the only way I'm even. That's the only reason I'm even thinking about that. Home Depot's been really still giving it the juice here. Um, I really like this stock. I like this stock to continue to go higher. It's really doing well in the face of. Uh, you got to look at interest rates and a couple other things when you look at that stock. General Electric. Okay, so we talked about this one last week, actually, and uh, we talked about it eventually getting back down into 3025. That happened all of a sudden on Friday. If you were watching this show, you, you – uh, you know that those numbers were caught out ahead of time. And that 3025 – was that weekly pull this up that 3025 let me save my page here 
that was our weekly we were looking at. The 3025, we looked at this daily and we talked about a chance to play defense above 3127 to trade it down into 3125. So that's happened. This morning it looks like we're trading 3045. So I think you can trade this bounce on GE playing defense below 3025. That's based on a big weekly number. And remember, here's another good example of this. That new profile attempting to appear, locked in on that Friday. Then we get the new profile, and now we get the entire exploration down to the other side of the box. A lot of times that will happen, and that's a trade in itself, and that's actually a an algo that's in the uh, HTML5 scanner that I flashed last week. Just to let you know when those particular trades are getting ready to happen. Um, let me pull this up. So uh, if I go into the stock section of the scanner, the S&Ps, and I go into, well, let's just do this. Let's go into new box. So on weeklies, this is where some of these stock stocks finished last week. So, yeah, and again, you know, we've got, I mean, you look at the weeklies, and this is kind of interesting. You've got 12 stocks only. This is so wild. I've never seen this before. We're going to cover this a little bit more when we come back, folks, about these new boxes appearing. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under Trading Newsletters. 
This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. So I was uh, alluding to looking at some... Uh, you know, new profiles attempting to appear and what that generally can do to a stock, uh, completing the fair auction down below if it's running up and you have a new box. But as I was looking at this, I'm telling you, this is quite amazing. Um, new profiles attempting to appear last Friday, 12 on weeklies and one on the daily, um, or excuse me, on, on down below. And, um, you know, these numbers are appalling as far as normalcy. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down into, I'm going to look at these. This is what I was showing before. So these particular stocks, we're going to take a look at ADP, ADS, Akamai. God, you remember that stock from uh, the late 90s? Akamai. I think, yeah, I think they based that out of Tampa. I was down in that area back then. Um, just crazy technology. Um, Boeing. Let's take a look at Akamai. All right, so you, you'll have some new information here on the weekly. The daily on Akamai starting to break a little bit here. I think you've got some better. Let's let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at another one here. Let's look at let's take a look at Texas Instruments. All right, so uh, this is one that um, let me go into e signal here really quick. I was just joking about e signal and the enormous bill. All right, so it's not shown on e signal here yet, but you're going to see you're going to see in the scanner more than likely a new profile appear, and you might see that on uh, on if you've got these indicators here on uh, Texas Instruments. And then you'll have a new target on the downside if you're considering trading that type of trade. Let's take a look at Whirlpool. So these are ones to keep your eye on as they open. You can put them into your favorites list and kind of see how the, the new inflection points happen. A couple other things to look at. Uh, let's go to weekly top here. I was looking at, let's see here. A little confused this morning. Let's go here. Um, these are all the stocks that are just kind of hanging around the weekly unfair highs. That's, uh, that's quite a few. Um, so what we want to do here is take a look at a couple of them. Just to, you know, if again, and the premise of this is looking at the S&Ps where they're at, uh, a lot of these stocks may not follow through. Let's take a look at AXP. So AXP, uh, we've had a great run. This is obviously in the XLF, um, pulling back into these daily and weekly unfair highs. This is something if we if we start migrating down below 75, 74, we could get something on the short side to start exploring that whole fair auction down below. But you've got to wait and let that pierce that unfair high on AXP. Let's take a look at uh, Google here. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with that. These are strong stocks I'm pulling up, looking at something that, trying to find something that may pull back. Let's take a look at uh, Procter & Gamble here. So Procter & Gamble obviously had good news. We're trading up into this 87.90. We talked about that last week, actually trying to trade against that. Let's take a look at this on eSignal. So 87.90, I think we reached that during the day and backed off on uh, Friday. 
So Procter and Gamble, I mean, you pretty much have reached major resistance here. We could just kind of use that as defense to kind of let this thing sail back a little bit here. Um, and you're going to have a new weekly bar, obviously, on Procter and Gamble. Let's take a look at Tesla. Yeah, this is one we've just been begging people not to step in front of a train yet. Uh, David White's been talking about a massive short interest on this, and um, that is uh, a bullish indicator in itself. you got to watch out anytime this guy opens his trap and says anything remotely, <laughs> possibly positive. Um, it's going to have some people running for the door who are trying to cover here. So, again, you know, as soon as this thing broke up above this 208.17 and closed above on the weekly. This is where you, you know, it was kind of okay to be long, not okay to be short. When I say not okay to be short, um, you haven't had a lot of things to play defense against when it comes to this stock trying to short it. So uh, that's still the case. And here's uh, the 240s on Tesla. If you kind of use this as the, re you know, regulates the trade up after the breakouts, there's that 208 general area right in there. Um, hasn't really had a lot of I mean, on the dailies and the weeklies, it's, it's just been, um, you know, long-term trend up type situation, but uh, not even anything to look at on the short side, on the ultra short term on this particular stock. Amazon. Now, this is kind of interesting. Um, you've got the POC in a pretty wide profile on Amazon on the weekly sitting here at 8, 8, 19, 79. Uh, and you've also got that 8, 15, 51 that we backed off of on Friday. So this is something considering that POC sitting on the weekly, you've got that daily on for high that was rejected. You could see this actually come back into eight, 784.81. I know that's kind of a daring move, but when you look at this, you've got a kind of a weekly big wide profile, but a lot of volatility can happen here. You you come off of those two major inflection points, and you haven't explored this fair auction at all from that yellow bar right there. So this particular trade I actually like a lot. It's a little bit more of a daring situation, not for a faint of heart, but eight excuse me 784.81 could be hit as a decent risk reward scenario on Amazon. I mean, trade it like, give yourself some room, but um, you know, this, this thing actually could come back. Coca-Cola, um, I think you've got, let's, see, let's just see here. You've got a chance to hit this again at 41.63 on the short side. Um, Big fan of this stock continuing to go lower. Johnson and Johnson. Um, this is one we've kind of had on our short list for a while. There's that seven one seventeen twenty three. I think we can easily see one twelve and even lower on Johnson and Johnson. We'll be right back. O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Got about uh, four and a half minutes left here. Let's take a look at JP Morgan. Looked at this last week, talked about and you got a strong stock pulling back to its uh, weekly M for lows, 82.73. Don't see why this couldn't be a little bit of a trading opportunity bounce situation. Let's take a look at uh, the XLF in general. We talked about this also uh, in a situation where we could actually, again, I know it's a strong sector and a market that's gone sideways lately. It was the just incredibly huge moves on a lot of these stocks within this sector but I uh, talked about trading it off of this 2387 last week and um, I think we could actually have a little bit more downside on this <clears throat> that's the XLF a lot of these stocks were in the same mode um, you know we have Bank of America sitting on these unfair highs at the same time 2339 um, we also had a couple other ones I think Citigroup was in the same situation yeah, that one actually pulled back a lot more. And um, our good friend, Wells Fargo. Uh, similar situation here. Um, a lot of these stocks could completely explore the fair auction down below, so just be aware of that. I think you had a decent risk reward on a lot of these stocks. Let's take a look at the utilities. So uh, let's see. Um, talked about trying to buy this 47.68 and it trading up to, up into 49.45. Uh, this was week before last, and um, I think we this trade's probably over right now. Um, there's no reason to get super excited about the utilities. Here's the uh, XLK, without question, uh, not the one to be shorting right now. Just has really kind of put the stake in the ground after you know we broke out came back and retested these are weekly numbers here on the XLK let's hit the currencies really quick before we go we got about two minutes left so got to restart that sit tight Okay, here's our British pound. All right, so 
we talked about some numbers up top to try to focus on, you know, the dollars coming down into that 9960, 9990 area. Uh, here's the British pound getting up into some numbers that we can pay attention to. We talked about 125.09. Now you've got 125.39. So you've got a decent resistance area there to, to look at the British pound from the short side, in my opinion. You've also got the uh, euro. Um, that didn't work out for me. Um, the dollar, we you know, know that that's probably going to see maybe some lower numbers, 99.60, 99.90. Here's that next stop up. We talked about uh, 108. Next time, next chance to short the euro. The yen, um, we didn't quite get down into those numbers, so I thought it was super attractive. We may see those now, 111, 67, 68. That's the back the truck cup number. Here's the Chinese currency. And we talked about the, the buy point, 6.8105. That's still the case in my mind on the CNY. And one last one, the uh, Aussie dollar here. And what a move up here. Um, closed above and sitting above weekly profiles now, so nothing is short at this point. Guys, stay tuned for Larry and all the hosts on TFNN. We'll be back tomorrow. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.